Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, thank you, Marco. Uh, thank you, Nathaniel. I'm Benjamin uh, Jean Roy uh, from Augur Associates. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, industrial hemp. Um, so with us, we have Marco uh, Fugueza today, who is the author of a groundbreaking uh, report from the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Uh, it was released a couple of months ago. Uh, and we have uh, Nathaniel Luxley, who is the uh, co-founder and director of the British Hemp Alliance and uh, expert in living soil. Um, so we'll start with a question with, with Marco. We won't get into the details of the report. I invite everyone who hasn't uh, uh, checked it to, to have a look at it. It's, uh, it's quite thorough. And uh, we have one of the co-authors, Kenzie, who is bringing right now a copy. Uh, if anyone wants to grab it afterwards, it's open. Um, so we'll start with a question with Marco. Uh, we know that uh, cannabis and hemp obviously have the same botanical plant, but with today different strains for different uses and with different regulations. Uh, we know also that hemp development is impacted by the development and the reform around cannabis uses, medical, non-medical. Um, so it's impacted negatively, it's impacted positively. Uh, what is, in your opinion, what could we do to make uh, the capacity uh, for hemp to develop sustainably without being too touched, to impede by the current challenges that are faced by legalization processes around the world? Um, so what could we do to foster this? Um, OK, hello, everyone. Thank you for having me here and uh, giving me the opportunity also to uh, refer a bit to the work that has been recently done by, at, the, at the UN. Um, so what we, we, we found in the report is that, uh, but that was mentioned already uh, several times with uh, respect to uh, uh, cannabis and its, uh, its uh, medicinal versus uh, recreational uses, is a kind of uh, proper uh, regulatory uh, framework. Um, I mean, as was mentioned yesterday by Kenzie, uh, what is prevailing at the international level is this uh, UN uh, single convention on, uh, on narcotic drugs, uh, the, the UN C61. And there, there is no proper definition of hemp varieties um, in the sense that uh, it's more, I mean, there is a clear distinction between the various uses. So it would be industrial, uh, medicinal, and uh, recreational referred to as non-medical, non -medical. Um, but uh, besides that, uh, there is no, for instance, reference to uh, what uh, hemp varieties can be, uh, how they can be characterized uh, with respect to the THC uh, content or any other uh, cannabinoid. And that's, uh, that's clearly an, imp an impediment to, uh, to a proper development of, uh, of the industry. Um, now, what is, uh, would be also important for having hemp varieties used uh, in a more uh, democratic way uh, would be uh, political willingness. Okay, that's that place. I mean, we see in the UK that, uh, okay, we are trying to move towards something uh, that is more um, able to promote uh, the, the hemp industries, but for instance, uh, the, the licenses to grow uh, hemp varieties are still delivered by drugs or health-related uh, entities, so that's the case in the, U in the UK, but also in, uh, in France or Slovakia. So that would be really uh, the first step. So I have the feeling that there's, I mean, not the feeling, but there's a kind of identity crisis, which is comparable to the one that was discussed in the, in the previous panel. And that should be solved, but also, uh, I mean, the help of uh, the, the, the political body uh, would, be, uh, would be crucial by uh, setting a proper uh, institutional framework. Thank you. Um, I would maybe add uh, the necessity also to have some granularity in that regulation in regard to the different uses that we can have with that plant. Um, I'm thinking of the example of the, the pepper, the capsicum. Uh, it could be used in cosmetic, it can be used in warfare, it can be used, uh, you can grow it in your, in your garden, uh, you can make different things and you have different regulations that are attached to that plant. Um, what would it be different for hemp? Um, that's a question that is worth asking. 
Um, I mean, again, uh, the, the issue related to the use is, uh, is uh, actually not solved by the UN Convention um, because, I mean, for in, in the UN Convention, the single convention, uh, cannabis means the, the, the flowering and uh, fruiting tops, uh, meaning that, uh, well, this part, I, I mean, the discussion, the inclusion of this part in uh, hemp-related type of uh, applications is controversial. And this has not been solved by, uh, I mean, this has still to be resolved at the international level. There are some recommendations that were made by the WHO uh, back in 2019, but they have not been all followed by, uh, by the, the, the Commission on uh, Narcotic Drugs. So that explains why the controversy mm -hmm. is, still, is still around. Um, I'll jump to Nathaniel, who um, can tell us a little bit about um, the issues that you're facing in the UK especially. Um, we, we do know uh, about the, the marvelous applications and how it can be um, such a solution for today's current problems in regard to climate change, for example. Um, and what is, in your opinion, lacking to, um, to what is it not developed more? Uh, why is it still at that scale that is often uh, too small to go towards um, vast, uh, vast replacement of uh, uh, commercial uses of you know, plastic or cement or et cetera? And what do you think is lacking today in the UK? Thanks, Ben. I think it's a <coughs> very good question. And touching on, building on what Marco has already spoken to about that United Nations scheduling um, is adapted or interpreted by every different country uh, very differently. Uh, I think we have a patchwork of um, uh, yeah, ways to implement that scheduling. So in different countries, you have different THC tolerances. Uh, within the UK, we, we currently have 0.2% THC allowed in the field uh, for hemp. Um, so yes, I think getting some, some clarity and some um, uh, definition and kind of context for industrial hemp um, and uh, uh, recognize it as an agricultural crop um, is, is a huge uh, opportunity. I think the barrier politically, um, there, there's uh, very little kind of will to kind of step outside of the comfort zone of uh, short-term politics, so I think there's, there is not that incentive, um, and the UK is, is really kind of almost going backwards in terms of opening up more licenses or, or areas, so uh, the process itself is, is lacking, the administration of licenses is getting even more challenging. Um, from a personal perspective, I've, I've been through it with various different growers, um, and when you want an industry or an agricultural crop to flourish, um, then putting these uh, stringent kind of processes and, and licenses in place is not going to help it. You're not going to you're not, not going to help an industry to grow. You uh, and building on that, obviously, we have a lack of infrastructure. Um, but there's not going to be any investment if you don't have that change in regulatory change in perception. Uh, and also in a, a banking, I mean, hemp is still classified within, within that same classification as, as cannabis, um, but we don't, yeah, we don't have access to the banking services online. Uh, there is that stigma, which is also applicable to hemp as well. So we've got a number of challenges, um, but uh, yeah, obviously lots of opportunities we can talk about. So there is this um, medium moment to find this equilibrium, to find in between too much regulation and not enough. What would be the, the most pressing number one issue uh, that the British Alliance is trying to put forward right now? I think uh, we want the crop uh, to have a wider access. Um, we want it recognized as an agricultural crop so that we can uh, open up more research, uh, seed varieties. We need an increase uh, in THC tolerance. Um, but really, that perception of it as a narcotic is, is really damaging to any kind of growth. Um, so I think changing that um, and recognizing the, the benefits, opportunities within the soil, within 
uh, various different uh, industries, I think, yeah, that would really open things up. You've mentioned in the past, in a, an article I read, um, the, 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 the potential uh, for scaling up the industry via the use of carbon credits. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, obviously, the voluntary carbon market has taken a, a massive uh, reputational risk, uh, damage recently. Um, rightfully so. I think there's been a uh, almost wild west, um, similar to what we've seen in cannabis, <laughs> a, a, a massive kind of uh, rush for these carbon credits, which didn't have the, the governance or transparency or um, actual kind of tangible benefits that that they had uh, promoted. So, um, yeah, over the last few months, it's, it's taken a massive hit. Vera and Pure Earth are, are, are really kind of, um, yeah, kind of making up for that. Um, and the, the price has, has fallen, but um, all of the uh, industry and government um, reports uh, into the carbon market will show uh, clear growth, obviously, with the um, introduction of further kind of uh, environmental strategic um, implementation, you have to uh, adhere to net zero standards. Every business eventually will have to have uh, their own uh, strategy for, for reduction. Um, but it's not a, a cure-all. Obviously, we have to look at reducing uh, those emissions, adapting processes, and um, and that's that's a priority. But when uh, yeah, when you need to to get to net zero, then the removal side of it is is a huge opportunity. So, um, working with soil scientists and, and farmers to develop a, a methodology, a protocol uh, which looks at high quality carbon removal, um, which uh, stacks the benefits. So you're looking at the the benefits to biodiversity, uh, the increase in um, living soil uh, when you increase the organisms and Microbes or fung fungi in the in the soil, then you know that you're going to get a much better, um, healthier soil, but also a, a a better propensity for carbon drawdown. Um, obviously, within um, carbon credits, you have to make sure that there's permanence. So there's there's opportunity within biochar and various different industries, um, but making sure that that's locked in, um, and there's no carbon leakage is really important. So I think building a robust framework is critical, um, but that takes collaboration, and that's from uh, a global perspective. I mean, we've, yeah, we've not got long left. IPP, IPCC report uh, is very damning. Obviously, the last couple of months has been pretty, pretty, uh, yeah, quite shocking in terms of uh, looking at the statistics, and I think it's e evident from everybody's uh, experience of uh, climate change. I think we, we really have to kind of make those adaptations, and working together is the only way. Thank you, Nat, and uh, maybe for the audience uh, to remind that with the Green New Deal uh, from the EU uh, being voted, uh, companies that want to have any commercial activities in Europe in between 2024 and 2026 will have to audit their emissions, publicize them, and obviously reduce them, and ultimately, as Nat was saying, compensate them. And so there is a... I, there is a synergy that could be fine in between cannabis, the cannabis industry, the medical cannabis industry especially, but we'll see, for example, with the experimentation in, in the Netherlands that they have to, to, to also grow indoors, same thing in Switzerland. So we have this necessity uh, to offset and for the industry to become less uh, carbon emission, emitter, and, and hemp can help with that. Um, so that's definitely a, a nice streamline to, to think about. Absolutely, I think, yeah, uh, cannabis, uh, various different perspectives and uh, parts of the industry, I think it needs to work together. Um, yeah, that, those emissions and, and that environmental impact and social impact has to be considered all stages along the way, otherwise we're just gonna have a, an industry as bad as any other. Thank you. Um, Marco, um, by reading your report, um, it seems quite clear to, to observe that the, the, the capacity for growth of the hemp market um, is, is, is another league from the, the medical cannabis, especially right now, uh, not necessarily in 10, 15 years, but right now the capacity to 
uh, replace uh, field-based uh, material uh, um, or cotton, for example. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite enormous in terms of the, the kind of market it can represent. Um, so what, what, what is, in your opinion, uh, the, the, the synergies uh, that could be uh, uh, put in place to, to, to develop those markets? Uh, we've, we've talked a little bit about the carbon credits and how it can help scale up. And what is, in your opinion, uh, uh, the development that could be made in that regard? Um, well, I, actually, I mean, the, the, the currently, uh, the uh, industrial hemp sector is still uh, very small. I mean, in terms of uh, cultivation, it's 0.02% of uh, lands around the world. Um, so it still has to, to go industrial. So, so we need a kind of a, a big push and, uh, and the possibility to replace uh, not only uh, uh, by, I mean, uh, fossil fuels or uh, minerals, I'm thinking of uh, construction and uh, insulation there. Uh, we can also think of uh, other natural um, fibers or uh, materials which are not necessarily extremely uh, performing well in terms of uh, environmental sustainability. And in the case of cotton, if we had to replace all the cotton production, I mean, we know that, I mean, that's just a, an hypothetical uh, scenario. Uh, we would have to increase uh, the cultivation, I mean, the area cultivated uh, with hemp by uh, 80 times, 80 fold. So that's huge. Uh, that would still only represent uh, 2% of, uh, less than 2% of the, 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 the total uh, cultivated area around the world. But that could be like the kind of big push that uh, the industry is uh, still uh, needing. And uh, the synergies that uh, could come, I mean, this could happen only if you have an appropriate uh, technological uh, development. Uh, that could benefit the cannabis uh, industry as well, despite the fact that the, the, the production processes are quite different for, for the time being. Uh, but, um, but the fact that uh, there could be some uh, de democratizations of uh, end products that may also contribute to uh, a better acceptance of uh, cannabis, for instance, as a, as a medicine. So that's, uh, that could play, I mean, the, the usual argument is to say that, well, we should legalize, and by legalizing, we would have access to any type of uh, uh, cannabis uh, varieties, cannabis sativa varieties, and that could definitely help the hemp sector. Well, uh, considering the timelines that have been uh, uh, spoken about uh, today and yesterday, uh, it's not obvious that uh, that will uh, necessarily happen uh, very rapidly. So we can think that rather by developing and giving really a big push to the to the EM sector, that could also help the discussions about legalization, bio democratization of of these type of products. And we know that this is this can play an important uh, an important role at the at the societal social uh, level. I totally agree. totally agree. I think. Um, yeah, there's huge market drivers uh, at the moment. The built environment represents 40% of global greenhouse gas emissions, um, and that's a huge impact. Um, natural materials has, has not been on the agenda. It's not been scalable. Um, but with regulatory change last year that come in for uh, the building industry within the UK, um, so the building regulations has updated for environmental um, protection there there is that will from from the from the market so they're looking at natural materials hempcrete uh, there is amazing innovations within um, prefabricated building um, panels um, there's some really really important work cross cross sector collaboration going on um, so I think that's a, that is a huge opportunity I mean you can put biochar in in cement and bring down the the greenhouse gas emissions I mean there's uh, opportunity for hemp to, uh, to work within uh, an agriculture, a regenerative agriculture system, but also a regenerative industry. So uh, architecture, all, all the architects are so, so supportive of looking at these natural materials. And when you're working with hemp combined with other natural materials, you get a really uh, positive um, climate impact. So, yeah. 
Thank you very much. Do you want to have yeah, a last word? Uh, maybe uh, if I can add something. I, I know that in the, the cannabis industry, sustainability, environmental sustainability is not necessarily the, the, the uh, primary objective uh, for the good, good reasons. But, uh, but I mean, the M sector could help. I'm not saying turning uh, the cannabis industry into a, a carbon negative uh, industry, but at least into a, a zero waste uh, industry because, I mean, Cannabis, it's only about the flowers, but we can use uh, the, all the, the old parts of the plant. And I mean, for instance, with a biochar, that could be a, a complementarity that uh, may have to be uh, considered in the, in the near future, most probably. Thank you very much. And I invite everyone who wants to uh, follow up with this discussion to uh, come with uh, at the party tonight at 7. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye.